So Magnus Carlsen was back at the board yesterday, 5th of December, playing in title Tuesday, late edition. And of all 11 games, this is the one that put the biggest smile on my face. So it's Jeffrey Zhang, the young American prodigy, playing with the white pieces here, a blitz expert in his own right, as we're going to see, and Magnus... After knight f3, of course, he plays something weird. Knight c6, this is apparently called the black mustang defense. Okay, we get e4. After d6, we're in a Nimzovich defense. Declined, Williams variation. Of course, Magnus doesn't take the center with pawns. Just not his style these days, right? The pawn on e4 attacked, defended with the knight. And after g6, we get a kind of Pierce position. But with this knight defense, Develop to c6 which you don't so often see now bishop g7 played jeffrey goes for the ultra aggressive line here magnus castles into it we get castles queen side and this game is more entertaining than watching gary kasparov blunder pieces now it's all over put your king on the screen like what's the queen takes g4 what's he overlooked so now we get a6 on the board b5 on the way Bishop h6, Jeffrey not hanging about. He wants to throw this pawn down the board. Magnus goes b5. Now a3, top computer move, but this tells you a lot about Jeffrey's style. He just flings the h pawn here, allows b4, goes knight d5, just sacrificing a pawn on e4, which Magnus duly takes. Best move. Now what's the young American's idea? Well, queen e3 hits the knight, it drops back, and he's gaining initiative here. Now there's a big threat of knight g4, forking these two, and then you'd win a bishop. So bishop takes now played, king recaptures, and the top move here is knight takes on f6, shattering the pawns or luring the king out, but you should take with the pawn, and then this one advances. But Jeffrey goes for bishop c4, a more ambitious kind of idea in a way, you know, developing another piece to defend this one. But it's a big mistake because it runs straight into knight a5. But Magnus misses it on this move. He goes pawn h5, only too happy to not allow white to do that one. And now with the h file looking a bit closed down, Jeffrey centralizes. But now Magnus doesn't need telling twice does play knight a5, hits this one, and it looks game over. You know, if you retreat, you get chopped, and then your knight's still pressured, and what to do. So this move was played. It is the best move. Now, it looks like you should take here and pressure the queen and everything like that. But if you do that, the knight sacrifices here, the queen's coming to g5, or h6, if the king retreats here, very big attack ensues, and white doing well. So, the knight was recaptured, Magnus doesn't touch the bishop, it was the best move. This one now drops back. We get bishop g4, great positional move, pressuring this knight, which wants to come to the centre later. Now queen f4 from Jeffrey. d5, technically better, because now Magnus has a chance to go pawn d5 here, or knight c6, so that after d5 he can put the knight on e5, but he misses all the ideas, goes queen d7, looking to keep up the clock pressure here, and now Jeffrey goes d5 takes the space gain, attacks b4. You can't let that one drop or then your knight's on prees and where's it retreating to? Not a lot of squares. So rook a b8 covers the pawn. Rook d2 breaks the pin here, threatens knight d4. But this is awesome from Magnus. He goes rook f8, not only activating a piece but responding to the threat here. Because if you now go with the knight, then of course you drop a rook. You know, with check, that's an entire rook. So tapes was played, queen recaptures, and still knight d4 no good, or queen e1 check comes, and after the rook blocks, you actually mate, because the bishop's supporting the square. So knight d4 not played, rook e2 instead, queen d7, now rook e1, knight d4 a big threat, that one's a monster in the center, f3 then come in, where's the bishop going? So it takes, this queen recaptures, now this is very very classy from Magnus, you know the computer talks about c6 or c5, but this is also a very top move, knight b7, shedding a pawn, best move by white to take it, but it allows Magnus to manoeuvre with tempo against the bishop, 
it drops back and the material has been restored because Magnus was a pawn up, you know, since he took on e4. So interesting game on our hands here. Bishop versus knight. What kind of middle game will we have from here? Well, Magnus plays the most Magnus move ever, right? You know, top engine move here, rook a8, etc. But he goes queen g4. This guy loves an end game, right? Queen captures, best move, you know, it was pressuring here. We reached this position, but it wasn't the best way to play because now rook e7 comes, pressuring the pawn, and Magnus goes on the defensive. And interestingly, one of the top moves here is rook h8. You so often see the top guys go active rather than passive defense. And the idea is, if g3 to cover, now f5, and if the pawn drops, then you get knight e4, pressuring f2, no f3 or en passant. Big counterplay, black actually winning there, so taking the pawn wasn't best. Okay, but rook c8 played to cover the pawn, and now this is my favourite part of the entire game, I have to say. you got two absolute blitz lions here, out in the wild, Serengeti, battling for dominance. What does Jeffrey do? He goes c3. Why would you give a pawn like this after captures and not recaptures? Well, b4 is his idea. Driving this knight to an inferior square, then bishop b3, knight attacked again, drops back to b6, and a4, a5 on the way. The bishop dominating that piece. No knight d7, the rook covers. Imagine going knight a8. Oh, disgusting. So what does Magnus do? Well, watch how he counters. f5, what is that all about? a5 on the way. Here's the trick. You go king f6, hit the rook, so no time to take or you drop a rook. Just awesome chess from both players. So the rook drops back and you've cleared the d7 square. You can now land the knight there without losing it. So rook takes on c3 plate. Jeffrey recoups his pawn with advantage. You know, this is coming really fast now. b5, b6, the rook is pinned. So Magnus goes king e5, looking for counterplay in the center. The computer now wants to march the white king in, but Jeffrey throws in a check. He's getting down on time, almost a minute. And of course, Magnus now retreats right to cover the square. Nope, wrong again. <laughs> he marches forward, all up in Jeffrey's grill now. This is getting exciting. Magnus loves to go on a king march. And it's very dangerous because now after king d2, setting up that barricade, not letting the king go further, you know, supporting the rook and things. Well, knight e5 now comes. Ideas of knight c4 check. And after the bishop recaptures, your king is then attacking these pawns here. So rook c3 played, excellent move, just classy blitz chess from both players. Rook b8 now from Magnus, but it is a mistake in a tough position. You know, running back one move, what does the computer want? f4 top move, but white with advantage due to these amazing pawns and this knight a bit pacified. But rook b8 hits the pawn, but it's a pseudo threat. A6, great move by Jeffrey. And what to do? You can't capture or you can't get the rook back in time. Both squares covered, you can't stop it. You're completely losing. Of course, the knight can't cover. So Magnus realizes, I don't know if he was streaming right, but he probably had an oh, crap moment. So he comes to A8, the pawn is supported, rook a7 covers here, and there's no two ways about it. White is much better. Now you can slow play this, you know, f4, f3, and etc. But Jeffrey goes for an awesome shot here, classic low on time shot. He takes on c7 with the rook, giving an entire rook to then get b6. And it's a well known kind of chess thing, right? Chess tactic. Two connected pawns on the sixth, you know, are too much for a rook to cope with. So one of them is going through. Now Magnus plays the best defensive move, only move to keep trying to fight. He goes rook c3. Now you cannot save this bishop. If you leave this diagonal, so say you come bishop c2 or something, then there's knight c4 check and you're picking up the pawn, covering the square. And if you go bishop a2 to still cover c4, then there's rook a3 hitting the pawns. If you push b6, well then you take with check. This is a problem, whoops, knight covers the square, rook's covering here, no good. 
So you have to actually ditch the bishop, push on one of the pawns. This is what we see played. Jeffrey makes the queen. Now we get check. You know, you could pick up this pawn already with the rook but uh, Magnus goes for this one here, now picks up the pawn, and we get this fascinating position where you've got knight, rook, and pawn against the queen. So it's technically level material here. Now, how does the game go? Well, queen a7 pins that rook, we get king d3 unpinning, queen a1, good defensive stuff so far from Jeffrey, but it is very tough for him. You know, the king's actually relatively safe. His own one's in a poor position. Magnus now starts hopping, setting up threats, and it's so difficult, low on time, two seconds, to keep finding the right checks. But Jeffrey doing a great job so far. Checks from a3. Rook b3 covers. Now, no time to take the pawn. You know, you walk into literally a mate in one. Huge problems with the king. So queen a6 check played. Now the knight blocks. We get queen a2. The rook hits. The queen slides. F4 now from Magnus, and it's great use of these extra pawns. Again, looking to box in this white king. We get queen d1 check. Has Magnus just blundered? Because after knight d2, now you can go check, and this pawn's about to drop. Well, in this position, there is one winning move, but it's so tough to spot. Magnus goes king d4, but king c3 was actually a better move because after the pawn drops, there's this amazing resource of pawn f3 here, which isn't available if the king's on d4. And the idea is you box in this white king, you threaten mate, and it's just unavoidable. You know, how to stop it. Um, oh, sorry, now you step with the king once this pawn takes. You know, you were threatening the mate otherwise, but when the pawn takes, step with the king, cover the square, and again, the queen just can't get round to stop. What to do? Have to give you queen. This is a well end game. Awesome line that the computer finds. Okay, after king d4, queen takes, the line not available. Instead, Magnus now goes for knight e4. Queen d1, back to a1, apparently the best defensive try. But the second pawn is taken. This allows Magnus to start harassing that queen. The king still pinned in. You cannot take here, or else the end game is lost after the king takes here. So queen g4 played, we get king takes on d5, h5, liquidates another pair of pawns, king d4, marching in, we get queen h6, pressuring the d-pawn, keeping the knight honest, f6 played to cut that queen, g4, d5 from Magnus, and look at the harmony, all the pieces protected. Queen g6, we're not going to get too focused on the evaluation bar here. It's bouncing around, up and down. Long story short, white's defensive task so hard, almost impossible low on time. We get king e3, now queen h6 check, rook f4, queen h3 check, the rook blocks, another check, knight g5. Queen g6 played, and after d4, now queen c2 or b1, the best defensive moves apparently. But king d1 played, and the evaluation bar plummets, because d3 shuts the trap on the king, mate is threatened, and there's no decent checks. You can do this, but then knight e4, what to do? There's nothing possible on this diagonal. So we get king c1, trying to run away, but now rook f1 check, king b2, pawn d2, and we see resignation. You can't stop the pawn going through without giving up the queen. Again, the checks here, they're just fruitless. You block with the knight, where to go from here. Just an awesome, exciting game between these two guys, and it was a huge battle for first place, as you can see on screen. I hope you enjoyed that one. Do subscribe to never miss a future video, and see another epic game of chess, check out the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching, and see you soon.